Okay, so quick disclaimer here from Future Dane, because there are a lot of books here, and I've actually seen some negativity going around recently where people have been kind of criticising book hauls as this kind of consumeristic thing to do, which I suppose, I mean, it's partly true. I guess it depends on your way of looking at it. I, I got about 50, 60 books in this haul, and uh, most of them are from charity shops. I think in total, the amount I spent on the books in this video is about the same as buying a brand new Xbox game. I don't play Xbox because I read, so I, I don't want to waste my time on it. No offense, Todd. Um, I don't know. I just wanted to flag that beforehand. Like this isn't, you know, I'm grateful that I get the opportunity to get as many books as I do, but at the same time, I'm not spending a huge amount of money on these. I mean, if you're buying new releases, say uh, a new release hardback is twenty pounds. That's about equivalent to my entire book haul here is about three point five hardbacks. So. Yeah, I don't feel bad about how many books I've bought. It's weird because book hauls are what kind of got me into booktubing, especially on this channel. I actually used to do it on my old channel for my book blog. And um, I got to the point where really all I was doing was the hauls because I always get books because that's just the life I lead. So I always have books and each month it was just the only thing that I did that... I guess it was lazy filming, I didn't, it didn't take much effort, but um, I cross posted from my, my old channel onto this channel and then Todd left a nice comment on it and then I thought, hey, maybe I should do more booktube videos on this channel, so I did. So thanks Todd and thank you Halls, let's see what I got in January. <laughs> Hi folks, Dane here, and welcome to my January 2018 book haul. Let's go. All right. So it's actually January the 1st, and I have this stuff here. I was going to try and squeeze it into my December haul, but I didn't get around to filming. So we're going to do it in this one. So some of this was actually given to me by my girlfriend, who gave me some of these bits and bobs that she got from various loot crates and stuff. So we'll start with this. This is uh, a couple of Field Notes 48-page memo books. It's the perfect for the budding detective. So these are cool. I always like notebooks. Speaking of notebooks... She also gave me this one, which is a comic notebook. 64 pages of never before seen action and adventure. So I think it gives, yeah, it gives you cartooning tips and a tear out balloon template. So I can try and draw some comics. And then on to the specific books. Let's go with these first. So these are various um, Loot Crate exclusive comics, I guess. So this one is The Walking Dead. And then I got this one, which is Dungeons and Dragons, but also on the previous side, it looks like it has Rocketeer Adventures. But mainly, I'm, I am I want to read it because Dungeons and Dragons. Some of these are sealed, look. So there's this one here, Street Fighter, Hyper Looting. Not high polluting, hyper looting, as in looting things and being a bit hyper. And then this Star Wars one as well. So... Pretty cool. I mean, I'll add these to my collection. I bought some issues of Neil Gaiman's American Gods last month as well, which you can see in my previous haul. Um, so I've, I've started to read a few more of these, which is pretty cool. Happy with those. And then the final thing that my girlfriend gave to me is The Woman... Bollocks, I dropped it. The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. And obviously this is quite a well-known thriller slash suspense novel. A passenger is missing, but was she ever on board at all? Agatha Christie meets the girl on the train. Now, I like Agatha Christie, but I thought the girl on the train was awful and highly derivative of other commercial thriller fiction. So, maybe I won't like this, but maybe I will. Who knows? It strikes me as the kind of book that will just annoy me and that I won't like, but I'm going to give it a go anyways. Mr. Postman came, so I have some Mr. Postman. So, this is Going Postal by Terry Pratchett. And I've actually read this, but I realised the other day that it's missing from my collection for some reason. So I was looking on Goodreads to see if there were any new Terry Pratchett books that had been released uh, posthumously. And um, I'd, I'd marked all of the Discworld series red except for this one book. And I was like, but I've read that one. And I had a look and sure enough, I didn't have it in my collection. So I, uh, I bought the book to, to replace w whatever happened to it. I didn't realise this book was this thick. But um, this is Losing My Virginity by Richard Branson, so it's his autobiography. And, uh, oh, actually, it doesn't look too bad. The print's nice and big. So, uh, I mean, it's a used copy and not in the best of condition, but I'm quite excited to read this. I think this will be interesting. I will learn some stuff. Okay, I have some things. Now, the first one of these, I actually opened this one because I didn't realise it was books because these are more 
I think you'd call them kind of pamphlets. They're like chat books almost. And these are Exploration and Shipwrecks by Shug Hanlon. One of these, I believe, is about a pirate radio station. And I can't remember what the other one is about. He said he'd send them both. And I'll, I'll show you this note. I'm not actually going to read it aloud because we, you will see. That's why I'm not reading it aloud. <laughs> but yeah, I'll read these, see what they're like. And then I've got this as well, which is definitely a book. This is City of Ashes by Cassandra Clare. And I'm going to be buddy reading this with uh, Kit Kats Can Read later on. So very exciting. Okay, Dane and Biggie here. We'll just do that now. I have some parcels, so I'm going to have a look at what we got. This is from... Oh, this has come from abroad, and I think I know what this is. So this is... <laughs> Factory Farming by... Somebody. There's, this is from Deborah A. Miller, that's it. So this, I guess, is ex-high school, this. This has come from America, I think. No longer the property of the St. Louis County Library. There we go. Where's that? Which St. Louis? I bet there's millions of them. I'm writing a book on factory farming. Uh, well, it's set on a factory farm, so I need books like this to read for research. So this is my uh, January research book. And then this one. This is very exciting, although it is damaged slightly, but whatever. This is Brian Epstein, a seller full of noise. And uh, Brian Epstein was the Beatles manager, and this is his autobiography, basically. And, um, yeah, it's quite hard to track this down. I couldn't find many copies of it. This is A Dark Estate by David Young. So this is book three in his series, I guess. So he had Starcy Child and Starcy Wolf. And now A Dark Estate is book three. And basically, I've mentioned this on my channel previously, actually. He, uh... He writes these books that are set in like Eastern Europe during the Cold War, so uh, when the body of a teenage boy is found weighted down in a lake, Karen Muller of the East German People's Police is called to investigate. So yeah, I've really enjoyed the first two books in this series actually, so I'm looking forward to book three, that'll be good. Oh, I'm hungover and feeling sorry for myself today. It was my spoken word night last night, so I got a bit drunk. And then when, when we got home, I may have accidentally drank half a bottle of wine as well wasn't even my wine, it was my girlfriend's wine. Why did I do that? So I'm sitting here with my snug as a pug hot water bottle. I'm going to haul some items for you. All right, well this one, first of all, this one is uh, the latest addition to my pillow collection. So I can now put this behind me here and, and lean on it while I do my videos. My girlfriend got this from uh, Primark, I think. I think she said it was four pounds, which is pretty good for a little, cute little pillow. So yeah, if you didn't know, I am Slytherin. I, <laughs> I didn't realize I was Slytherin. And then I, I took the Pottermore test and uh, discovered I was Slytherin. And there is a video of that if you want to see that happen. Anyway, so I also bought a bunch of these as well. So uh, these are five packs of film arrows. And these are what I use for um, taking my notes, basically. Hang on, I'll show you. They come with these little clips on the back so you can clip them in and then it keeps your place as a bookmark. And then when you're ready, you can just peel one off and uh, stick it in. So for example, let's mark this page. And then uh, they stick out. Yeah, very cool. Speaking of, might as well show you while I got this. Uh, I've also got Nick Hornby, Slam, and uh, Vault, The Vault by Ruth Rendell. So I've never read any Ruth Rendell before. I have read some Nick Hornby, but I haven't read this particular book. And um, both of these books I got from the book exchange at my local pub. I got these yesterday while I was getting intoxicated. And um, yeah, happy with that. And then the last thing, this is actually, this is from what they call, they're called Geeky Craft. This is the world of wizarding stuff. So I watch a lot of booktubers who um, open the boxes and get the subscription boxes. And they're cool. So I have decided to take out a world of wizarding subscription. Mainly because of Kit Kats Can Read. This is Kit Kats Can Read's fault. But um, yeah, their December thing had some cool stuff. So I was like, I'm going to order some of the December bits. It smells minty. It smells like mint. It smells mint chocolatey. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, that's, that is helping my hangover, actually. It smells like, um, you know, like when you get the minty shower gel. I don't know why it smells of mint, though. I haven't ordered mints. 
Oh, minty bubble wrap. Why does it smell like mint? There's no mints in here. Okay, we've got some green paper because obviously Slytherin. Yeah, I got a couple of these. The Ambition Slytherin t-shirts. Wait, wait, let me let me just strip quickly and Oh ha! Why did you just do I just did Alan Partridge? I don't know why I did Alan Partridge. Oh. So yeah. So I've got two of these. I've got another one here. So I thought it'd be super cute because me and my girlfriend are both Slytherin. So we can both <laughs> wear matching t-shirts. I also had to get this. I couldn't not get this. It's too much for my brain right now. Oh, it's yellow. Wingardium Leviosa. Oh no, I did that too extreme. This is Ron's wand. And it's, uh, I don't know, it's just really pretty. I've always wanted a wand. And it's quite heavy as well. Like, this would hurt if you... Ow. But it feels... Feels reassuring. And now I have a wand. I have a Slytherin t-shirt and a wand. Oh. Hello. I have a thing. Problems by Jade Sharma. Girls meets train spotting. This actually looks really pretty. It's an uncorrected proof look. I don't recall asking for this, but it looks interesting. Funny, observant, self-destructive. Maya has problems. A sweet, handsome, heavy-drinking husband she's not sure she loves. Her detached, selfish lover. Her overdue thesis and dead-end job. Her dying mother. Herself, most of all. And her escalating drug habit. What's left when those are peeled away? Balancing vivid intensity with numb disdain. Problems makes a story of addiction and redemption fresh, necessary, and desperately funny. Explicit and raw problems is an astonishing debut novel. This does look quite cool. So I am looking forward to checking this out. Oh my god. Alright guys, I hope you're ready because this is going to be epic. I uh, went into town the other day and bought 39 books. And also two mugs. I got these... Uh, Game of Thrones mugs. So this one's mine. This is my Winter is Coming mug. You can see that it is caked in stuff because I have been drinking lots of coffee today. I'm not sure where the other mug is, but it is a, a Daenerys uh, House Targaryen mug that says blood and fire on it. I actually laid out all of these books that I'm about to talk about on my bed and there's a little bit of footage of that here. Now before I go through all of these books, I'm going to check a few books that I got in the post as well. I should point out, even though I bought 39 books, they were very cheap. I think it came to about £39, which is what, 50 maybe $55. So for 39 books, that's not bad. I mean, that'll keep me going for two months as well. Let's check these two, because I'm curious as to what these are. This comes in a pink thingy. Okay, so this is from uh, Kit Kats Can Read here on YouTube, and this is her copy of Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. So, uh, yeah, she, she finished reading it, and she was talking about not really needing it anymore, so I thought uh, maybe I could have it. So, very excited. I'm looking forward to reading this. Thank you, Katie. And then there's this, which is making weird noises. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot I'd ordered this. Um, yeah, this is super cool. I got this to play with my girlfriend. This is not book related, but it is a Dungeons and Dragons uh, starter set. You can see it's still sealed and stuff. I used to play Dungeons and Dragons with uh, my dad and uh, a family friend. They actually had all the first edition stuff from like 1978 and stuff. Right, let's see what's in here. We have our dice, our die rather. We've got here Lost Mine of Fandelver. Start a set rule book. So we've got a rule book in a preset campaign. We have these character sheets here, lovely. So yeah, Dungeons and Dragons starter set. All right, now on to all the bookish stuff I got from the charity shops. So I guess we'll start with this big old one. 
So this is a box set of The Mortal Instruments by Cassandra Clare. I got this from the works. So this was... It says only £12. RRP £48.94. Basically, the recommended retail price of this box set is about how much I spent in total on all of these books. Yeah, it's just a nice little box set, as you can see. I can... Uh, I don't normally collect books, uh, well I do collect books but I don't get obsessed with getting them all from the same design and all that kind of stuff. I will say the actual box for this box set is very flimsy, it's like this really weak cardboard. So this is the one I am reading next which is City of Ashes, I've already read City of Bones and uh, yeah I'm buddy reading, well I'm buddy reading all of Cassandra Clare's books with uh, again with Kit Kats Can Read and uh, Damien Tariquez here on YouTube. And if you want to join us, by the way, let me know. And uh, we've got like a Facebook group chat, so I can add you to that if you want to add me on Facebook. Something that's bothering me very slightly about this, I don't know if you can see, but where it says Cassandra Clare Shadowhunters, on these three books, you can see, you can see it's shinier on those three books there than on the others for some reason. I don't understand why that is, very odd. All right, and I want to hurry this up because we've got loads of these. So I got uh, Notes from a Big Country by Bill Bryson. This actually has a different name in America. Bill Bryson is an American writer who kind of moved to live in uh, the UK. And he's written a book called Notes on a Small Island about his time in the UK, which I really enjoyed. And Notes from a Big Country is basically a similar thing, but about uh, America. I got George Orwell, Why I Write, and this is one of these little penguin books things, and it's just very cute. I saw on Goodreads a bunch of people I follow who have already read this, and um, I'd not heard of it actually, so I I'm glad that I saw this and picked it up. I also got the Ladybird book of the zombie apocalypse, so this is one of the new series of Ladybird books that kind of, I guess, put a spin on things that we're interested today with the old Ladybird sort of 1950s style approach to uh, to a how-to book. Then we have Catus Petasatus, which is the cat in the hat in Latin. I mean, as soon as I saw this, I was like, I need the cat in the hat in Latin. I think we all need the cat in the Latin, the cat in the hat in Latin. This will go really nicely with my um, my uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and Scots. Just, it's just really odd that somebody has gone to the effort of making this, but I'm glad that they did. Then we have. Haruki Murakami, what I talk about when I talk about running, and I can't remember who recommended this, but I saw somebody on BookTube specifically recommend this book, and they were like, even if you're not into running, you will find it enjoyable. Um, Maruk uh, Murakami is obviously a fairly well-known author, and I've read Norwegian Wood, I think is actually the only one that I have read by Murakami, but I have up on my shelves up there, I have Desire and um, A Wild Sheep Chase. And basically, I'm sort of slowly getting to Murakami's back catalogue, so I thought, what I talk about when I talk about running, I'll pick that up as I saw it, and I paid a pound for it. So just over a dollar. I got, I actually can't read the font on this very well, but I got The Perks of Being a Wallflower, and it's by Stephen Chbosky, maybe? Is that how you say it? Somebody correct me, please. Never seen the movie, and I've just heard reasonably good things about the book, and again, it was cheap, so I thought, might as well pick it up while I got the chance. I got a bunch of books by this author, and that is uh, Jasper Ford, and Jasper Ford wrote the Thursday Next series. He's a very bookish writer in that his books reference other books, if that makes sense. And I got a bunch of them, so we're just dipping out of them as I find them. This one is Something Rotten. I also got First Among Sequels, and there are some more, but we have to get to them. There's still a lot of books to go through here. I got In a Dark Dark Wood by Ruth Ware, again it was just a pound. I read The Woman in Cabin 10 recently and uh, well see my review for my thoughts on that. It wasn't great, it wasn't awful, but I thought as I think she's only got two or three books on the market and I saw this one, I thought I might as well pick it up and try and get to it. We have another Ladybird books book, so this is the Ladybird book of red tape. I'm sure if you've ever had a office job you know exactly how annoying red tape can be. Kind of glad I'm freelance now. We have Twilight, but it's by Peter James, not by Stephanie Meyer. Peter James uh, is the author of the Roy Grace crime novels. Very nice guy. He has a YouTube channel, actually, that you should check out for an author, like a well-known author as well. His uh, YouTube channel is great. And he does a lot of interviews with, like, well-known crime writers as well. Like, he's, he's probably done Ruth Ware, actually. And again, I'm just trying to work my way through Peter James's back catalogue. So when I saw Twilight in the charity shop, 
No brainer, had to pick it up. Derek Landy, School Duggery Pleasant, playing with fire. And I'm just slowly working through School Duggery Pleasant. Shout out to Graham Quigley, who uh, I believe is a School Duggery fan. I've read one or two of the books in this series, but I've read them out of order. But, you know, it's just one of those series like Cassandra Clare and Rick Riordan that I'm trying to get through all of the books eventually at some point. Well, this is the last of one of the piles. Here we have Andy Weir, the Martian. And obviously this is super well known. I've not heard great things about Artemis, but I have heard great things about The Martian. So when I saw this, I thought I'd pick it up just because, you know, I even watched the movie of this actually, and I did enjoy the movie. So I'm interested to see whether the book is as good as everyone says it is. Then I got Revival by Stephen King. This is just one of several Stephen Kings that I didn't have. So I'm just, I'm working again, I'm working my way through Stephen King's back catalogue and he has a lot of books. This one I did not have, but I do now. Aha. We have another one of the new Ladybird books. This is actually a new take on Enid Blyton, and then this is written by Bruno Vincent. And I recently read uh, Five on Brexit Island, and I thought it was hilarious. So I thought, Five give up the booze, what can go wrong? And if you didn't know already, these are like, I guess, a parody take on Enid Blyton's classic Famous Five books. We've got a little bit of non-fiction. This is Bit of a Blur, and this is Alex James's autobiography. So Alex James played bass guitar for Blur, who I'm sure you've heard of Blur, one of the most famous Britpop groups. I mean, they had a big rival with rivalry with Oasis. A lot of people diss Oasis. Like, they just say they're a Beatles ripoff. But I like Oasis. I also like Blur. And I like the fact that after finishing up with Blur, <laughs> Alex James uh, started making cheese. And he's actually, like, a really well-known cheesemaker. His cheese has won awards and stuff. So, you know, he played bass in one of the most iconic Britpop bands of the 1990s and then started making cheese. You've got to read that in an autobiography form, haven't you? You can't not be interested. Then we have Them by John Ronson, and this is all about uh, adventures with extremists. I've read The Psychopath Test by John Ronson, and that was pretty good. It wasn't amazing, but it was interesting enough. And it did make me want to read some more of his books, so when I saw this, I thought, you know, better pick up Them. And then we have Dark Places by Gillian Flynn. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you've probably seen my review of um, The Grown Up, which is her novella. I really didn't like Gone Girl, but The Grown Up I did enjoy. And based on the fact that I've now read The Grown Up and Gone Girl, I think Dark Places and... What's that other one called? Sharp? Sharp Objects. I believe those two are actually the only two that I haven't read of hers now, so I figured might as well get it. This is it. This is all I've got left to go through now. Can you imagine how heavy all of this was to carry back home, by the way? Yes, it was heavy. I got a, uh, I guess a, a booktube staple. I got Tithe by Holly Black. So I've never read any Holly Black. I know that she's the queen of the fairies and she's got a new book out that everyone's going on about. Um, I'm not expecting to like this, to be honest, just because whenever an author gets that hyped, I inevitably don't like them that much. But I thought I'd give it a go. And I guess if I'm reading through all of Cassandra Clare's stuff, eventually I'm going to come across one of the books that she did with Holly Black because I think they've done at least one together. Then we have The Snow Angel by Lauren St. John. And I never see Lauren St. John being discussed on BookTube by anyone except for Aoife from Fred Weasley Died Laughing. So Aoife, this one's for you. I saw it and was like, I've got to pick it up. I've actually read a couple of Lauren St. John books before and I interviewed her on my book blog. That's kind of how I know, know of her because when I launched my book blog, socialbookshelves.com, I did that back in about 2013, I think, and she was the first or one of the first authors that I interviewed. She was the, probably the first well-known author or reasonably well-known author. So since then, I've been trying to check out some of her books and just look at this, like hard back. So this is the dust jacket, stunning. Um, it's a little arctic wolf on the inside it's just a stunning little book and i'm i'm looking forward to this one and uh yeah i mean i think one of the things with charity shops as well f for this for a pound or again Aoife's irish so i guess she uses the euro i don't know which part of ireland she's from actually but in euros this is a pound is what a pound is one euro 15 cents one dollar thirty one dollar forty something like that so it's super cheap for a beautiful book like this and it goes to charity I mean, this particular charity was Save the Children, but these are all from a whole different range of charity shops. And uh, 
If I can fill up my library and give money to charity at the same time, I'm laughing. We got In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. So I obviously know Capote is the author of Breakfast at Tiffany's and also just for being a bit of a crazy author in general. In fact, maybe I should do a five bookish facts episode about Capote because I bet there'd be some interesting facts there for me to dig up. Um, I, I don't think I've ever read any Capote other than Breakfast at Tiffany's. And so when I saw this, I was like, I've got to pick that up and, uh, and give it a go. Then we have the obligatory Agatha Christie book. This is Murder is Easy, and it's one of the beautiful old prints of it. This was only 50p, so this one was super cheap. It says in the corner, actually, Liz, Happy Christmas 86, Joe. Another Jasper Ford. We've got the Big Over Easy. Let me pull out all the Jasper Ford ones here. So we've got the Big Over Easy. We've got the Well of Lost Plots. We have One of Our Thursdays is Missing. We have The Woman Who Died A Lot. Most of these are Thursday Next books, which is his most famous series. Then I have uh, Wonder by RJ Palacio. So again, this is just super well known on booktube. I believe uh, Kit Kats Can Read was raving about this as well. She actually had like a, a version of this, which was like a children's version of Wonder, which was super cool. So looking forward to that. I got of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. It's just a uh, Penguin Classics edition. And yeah, I mean, it's on my list of classics I want to get to. I've never read any Steinbeck before, but I'm looking forward to it. I got Alan Bennett, The Lady in the Van. I read an Alan Bennett book. Uh, it was called The Clothes They Stood Up In. It was like, it wasn't even a novella. It was a short story, really. And I really enjoyed it. And that's the only Alan Bennett I've ever read, but I thought it was great. So I've been looking out for more Alan Bennett and I saw this and thought I'd better get it. I got Catch Me If You Can by Frank W. Abagnale with Stan Redding. And obviously this has been turned into a movie with Leonardo DiCaprio. Funnily enough, when I was putting my books into Goodreads as well to update them so that I knew, you know, I owned them and was reading them. I saw that Cass from what Cass read had read and reviewed this and given it four stars, I think. And, it, you know, I just think it's an interesting story in its own right. I mean... There's a reason that it's done so well as a memoir and then been turned into a movie and that reason is that as a story It's just insane. It's one of those true stories that you just couldn't make up and I'm looking forward to to uh, hearing it in Frank W Abingdale's own words. No, it's this big pile of books piling up next to me as well. Only two more to go We'll uh, look at this one. This is Bill Bryson, The Road to Little Dribbling, and this is more Notes from a Small Island. So this is basically a sequel to the one that I mentioned, Notes from a Small Island, and this is just all about his travels throughout the United Kingdom. But what's cool is that he's, again, he's, he tells it from an American perspective, but also he does kind of, he's been living in the UK for long enough, really, that he kind of gets the British perspective and the British sense of humour as well. So it just makes for some really interesting reading. And I think Bryson, as an author, kind of inspired a whole bunch of kind of comedy travel authors like Dave Gorman and Dally, Danny Wallace that, that I've since got into. And um, yeah, I was late to the party with Bryson and I'm, again, trying to work my way through his back catalogue. The last one for now is... Heroin Diaries, A Year in the Life of a Shattered Rock Star by Nikki Six with Ian Griffins. So Nikki Six was in Motley Crue and this is his memoirs. He was, he's kind of one of those famous heroin addicts. What's cool about this one is just the interior of it and whatnot as well. This was two pounds, so what, two dollars fifty or something like that, which for, a, you know, a glossy hardback like this, I don't think you can complain about too much. Even the spine looks cool. So, I mean, I, I've got to admit, I don't like Nicky Six. I think he's a bit of a bell end, but um, I've heard good things about this book, so I thought it'd be a shame to let my prejudgment of Nicky Six stop me from actually reading this book. Who knows? I might read this book and become a convert and start listening to Motley Crue. Hey Google, play some Motley Crue. I don't like Motley Crue. Okay, Google, stop. So, uh, this is a drone. I ordered a drone because I wanted to have a drone. <laughs> it's got a camera in it. Yeah. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can figure out how to use it. I've never used a drone before, so this could like last five minutes and just end up 
crashing and burning. Okay, just the one book to mention today, and that is uh, Finders Keepers by Stephen King. So I picked this up at the book exchange in my local pub. Uh, by the way, if I look awful, it's because I'm hungover, because I went to my local pub. And um, yeah, this is one of those where you can t kind of take a book and donate some money. So I donated two pounds for this, because I mean, it goes to the air ambulance, and it's a beautiful hardback, and it was 20 pound brand new, so. I think that's fair. And this is the second book in the Bill Hodges trilogy, which starts with Mr. Mercedes. And I've read Mr. Mercedes, and I saw somebody on BookTube talking about this specific book the other day. And I remember leaving a comment being like, um, I need to get that, I need to get hold of it. And then I saw it, so yay, let's do this. Okay, it's Future Dane here, who you saw at the start of the video. I'm back again, and I've got two books. And I think one might be from Katie from Kit Kats Can Read. I don't know, she told me to let her know when the postman arrived. <laughs> okay, so this is one that I bought on eBay. Um, I Again, I, I have no problem with second-hand books, so this one I got fairly cheap on eBay. And this is Alan Turing, The Enigma by Andrew Hodges. And I think this is basically like the ultimate biography of, uh, of, of Alan Turing. It's actually a lot longer than I thought it was. It was about 586 pages by the looks of it. But yeah, I'm looking forward to reading this. I think Alan Turing is an unsung hero. He's uh, the father of computing. He was also like unfairly treated as a gay man at a time when being gay was illegal. You know, he was threatened with chemical castration and eventually killed himself by biting into a poisoned apple. Or at least that's the story. I don't know how much of that's true, but we're going to find out by reading this book. And this one here that looks like it's from Scholastic. So I don't know if this... I'm sure this isn't from Katie. I don't know what this is. They've sent me Shell by Paula Rawsthorn, which looks like a generic thriller. You know what it is? You know what's happened here? I know what's happened here. So, presumably, Katie has spoken to her contact at Scholastic and got them to send me Shell. And I, I didn't recognise it because I'm pretty sure I have a different cover than the one that she has. But she recently read and reviewed this on her channel. I'll put the link below. And, uh, basically... Because I said when I picked this up, right, and I'm really, really sorry now because I'm like, oh god, she sent me this video and she's gonna be, she's gonna be upset with my treatment of it. But it looks like a generic thriller. But from what Katie said about it, it actually sounds really interesting. It's it's more like a YA retelling of Frankenstein. So a lady wakes up in this new body and she's faced with a life that she didn't choose. How far would you go to stay alive? And yeah, I was talking to Katie and it sounded really interesting. Last thing. This came after I filmed my outro, but I'll put it in before that, because why not? This is from Amazon. What did I order? Oh, that's right. This, this might be my indie book for the uh, Dane and Todd, Todd and Dane's indie read-along for the month of March. This is Trespass by Mikey Campling, and this is the Darkening Stone book one, and it's a fantasy book. So, uh, yeah, fantasy indie novel. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Well, anyway, on that note, it is now January the 31st, and I need to get this last little clip edited down in with the rest of them, and then all of it uploaded for whenever this video is scheduled in. And I also need to film my wrap-up, where I'll talk to you about the 20-odd books that I read in, in January. It's uh, It's been a busy month, so yeah. Thanks for sticking with me if you've watched this far into the long video. Be sure to let me know with a comment which of these books take your fancy. And uh, let me know as well like where you go to buy used books. And if you buy used books. Because I think that should be a discussion at the moment. Because I freaking love used books. Look how many used books I got. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot for watching. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Bye bye.